So, for this problem, uh, what I want to do is show you guys, this one has multiple transformations. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to look at each one of these transformations um, individually and see how it's going to affect our graph. First thing we obviously have to know is what is, what is our parent graph? So, this is an absolute value function. Which is like a big, nice V, and it makes that V at the point zero zero. So now we need to remember, all right, what are all of our transformation that's going to be happening? Um, first thing is we notice since we have something that's within, it's inside of our function. This is f of x of absolute value of x. So this is the original paragraph. Nothing has been changed. There's no transformation. Now we have all this stuff that's transformed it. Whenever we do something, anything inside of that function. That's messing with our x value. And this is actually going to be shift left 4. And what they're doing, if you notice that, since it's inside the function, it's going to be shifting our x coordinates 4 to units to the left. This 8 is outside of our function. It's outside of the, bra uh, the brackets. So therefore, this is going to be messing with our y coordinates. And this is going to be shifting up 8 units. And this is, um, this is like our negative A. Again, this is outside of our function. So what this is going to do is this is going to reflect our x-axis. And what again, what it's doing is since this is outside of our function, since that negative side is outside of the function, what that's going to do is that's going to change all of my y coordinates. So instead of my y coordinates being positive, they're not going to be negative. So let's look at each one of these transformations individually, and then we'll put them together as a graph. First thing, if I was just to reflect this graph, if I was just to do f of x equals a negative absolute value of x, all I would do is I would change my y coordinates so they are now all negative. Then if I was going to do, I think it might be run out of space, if I was going to do f of x plus 4, that's going to shift all my x-coordinates that's going to shift all my x-coordinates over 4 1, 2, 3, 4 so it's still the same graph but now it's been shifted over 4 and if I was going to do this shift plus 8 now it's going to shift all my y-coordinates over 8 or I'm sorry, my y-coordinates up 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that would be f of x equals absolute value of x plus 8. So you guys can see we have our original paragraph, and I'm doing all this stuff. I'm reflecting it, I'm shifting it to the left, and I'm shifting it up 8. So there's a lot of things that are going on just in this one problem. So what we have to do is we have to kind of merge all these transformations together. Now there's really not really you know, a standard way you can do it. You can just do one transformation at a time, then move that left four, and then move it up eight. Or you could do this transformation first, then reflect it, and then move it up eight. Or you could do this first, then shift it left four, and then flip it. There's really, it doesn't really matter what order you go into. But the main important thing is on your final graph, it's going to be, have to be facing downward, it's going to have to be shifted to the left 4, and it's also going to have to be shifted up 8. So, why don't you guys take one last look at it? Because now, when I look at it, my graph, and once you get good at it, you can just say that, alright, I know that my paragraph crosses at 0, 0. Well now, I'm going to have to go to the left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now that turning point, that turning point's right around there, and instead of opening up, my turning point, or my graph, is now going to open downward. So that's how you graph when you have multiple transformations.